All right, so I was on this holiday with my family a few days ago and my son and my wife were playing a memory card game but they lost a tile. So I thought about myself, why don't we create this in JavaScript? So let's dive into it. All right, here we go. Um, I've pre-created an index.html file um, with actually not so much in it. Um, a, a JavaScript file with uh, an add event listener for the DOM content loaded, so we can put our JavaScript code right into here, and an empty CSS file. Um, I've also collected uh, some images, for example, a cat, a dog, uh, Mario Kart, and also a blank square for when we found a match in the memory game, and also a placeholder. For the placeholder, I've used our company logo. All right, so let's get to it. Um, first of all, I'm going to have the title uh, memory game. Just with a capital G. All right, in the body tag, we're going to add uh, a div with a class name of page uh, container. And in this container, we're going to have a title. I'm going to go for an H3 for memory game. Um, then we're going to have the grid that we're going to play in. So another div with the uh, game grid class name. So all the action will go on in here. Then for yeah, feedback reasons, I'm going to add a paragraph with the attempts, attempts with, uh, let's say a span with a class name of attempts holder. And we're going to do the same thing for the found cards. Also with a span, uh, with a class, uh, found holder. And actually that's it for the um, HTML right now. So if we're going to load this in, this doesn't look very nice. So we're going to add some um, CSS. Just to be clear, I'm only going to add some minimal CSS because this is and always will be a, a functional tutorial and not a styling or CSS tutorial. So the page container will have a width of 750 pixels and we're going to add a margin of zero auto just to center the whole thing. Then we're going to have a game grid and the game grid will be set to um, display flex. Then the flex wrap will be a uh, wrap and we're going to give it a height of, uh, let's see, the tiles will be 150 pixels by 150 pixels. I have uh, five images, so we have 10 tiles. So let's go for four height. So we're going to go for 600 pixels and a width of 100%. So yeah, that should do. Then um, the grid itself will have a border of one pixel, a solid black, so we can see where the grid is on the screen. Then the images, uh, for the images we'll have a width and a height of 150 pixels as mentioned before, 150 pixels, there we go. Of course, we still need to add uh, a link to our style sheet, and it's only just style.css. There we go. So we have a centered page with a tile container and the game grid title, and yeah, all the stuff that we've done. So next up, we'll have our script. Um, and I'm going to link it. It's a script.js. There we go. In our JavaScript file, we have, um, first of all, a card list of all cards that are in the game. I have created this uh, before, so I'm just going to copy paste it right in here. So we have a card list. It's actually an array object, uh, an object array, excuse me of um, all the cards are in the game. You can see that I have um, uh, two of each. So 
to get matches. Um, they contain a name and an um, image. Well, that's it so far. Um, first of all, we need a function to uh, initiate uh, the board. So I'm going to call this initiate board. And I'm also going to initiate board on the bottom of the script to make sure this is ran. Then we have a for loop um, of the length of the card list. And actually we're going to create a card that's a document create element. And this element will be an image. Uh, this card will have an attribute actually called source and it will contain the placeholder so we're going to set the attribute source to um, images placeholder dot png there we go then we're also going to set um, the id of the uh, yeah, of the elements to the id and the card list set attribute again for the data id set to the i because we're using i to loop over the for loop we're also going to add an event listener add event listener for the click event and we're going to call a function uh, flip card whenever it is clicked but first of all we're going to comment this out because we didn't create the um, uh, the function yet so then we need a grid um, well first of all we're going to create a constant uh, called grid document and we're going to use the query selector because we have created this um, div already with the class name of game grid and this will be actually our grid so grid dot um, a pen child of the card. So, quick recap: um, the initiate board function will loop over all the elements in the card list. It will add um, an image for all of them and append it to the grid. So, basically, like the card list is structured right now, we will have a cat, a cat, a dog, a dog, and so on. So we want to randomize this. So we're going to use a very simple function. Um, cards, oh, I see that I have a typo right here. Cards list, cards list, uh, sort. I know there are better ways to randomize things, but I prefer to use, in this case, uh, a very simple function. 0 0.5 minus the math, minus the math of uh, random. And this is actually a very easy and fast function to randomize small things. I know there are better ways to do this, but yeah, for this kind of example, this will suffice. All right, so let's make another function called flip card. There we go. Um, so we can comment this out. So first of all, we have, we're going to create some extra variables to make this work so we have a variable called chosen card this will be an array and it will contain the chosen cards at this moment also the uh, chosen cards ids must be tracked because we don't know which cards will be clicked otherwise then um, what i like to do I also like to have a const for the um, attempt holder document uh, query selector query selector for the attempt holder and also the same oops the same for the found holder that we have created in our DOM earlier. And I also like to uh, keep track of the cards that are in the game. I don't know if I'm going to use this or not, but just put it in there. 
Then we have a variable for the amount of attempts that are uh, made. Attempts set to zero because at first we, we won't have any attempts. Um, also, the found cards will be set to zero in the beginning. Then we need to add the um, yeah the variable of attempts and the found cards to the to the holders. So we're going to set uh, found holder text uh, content to um, found cards. We're also going to do the same thing for the attempts holder text content to um, attempts. There we go. So in the flip card function, we're going to add um, a variable of the card ID that has been clicked. So get this uh, dot get attribute get attribute of data ID. So we know which card ID was was clicked. If the source of this one was not blank, we should yeah check it. So if this um, get at whoops, attribute um, source is not equal to whoops not equal to the images uh, blank PNG. Then you should then we should uh, continue in this function. So we're going to add this one to the chosen cards. So chosen cards push. Um, we're going to push the card list card ID and I don't need the quotes here card ID dot name so that we know which one has been chosen we're also going to use the card ID uh, of the yeah just to make sure that we know which one to flip back to the placeholder or to the blank one chosen cards ID uh, push also the card card ID. Then we're going to um, yeah make the card flip its, itself. So this um, set attribute, and we're going to replace the source here, source to the card list, card list, card list, card ID, card ID dot image. And if we have uh, in the chosen cards um, length two items, like this, we're going to check for a match. But we're going to set a timeout for this because otherwise we don't have the feel of the game. So set timeout. Set timeout for a function that we still need to create. It will be um, check for match. Yeah, check for match. And we're going to add 400 milliseconds. Yeah, you can add in here whatever you want, but I, I would prefer to go for um, 400. Um, and just one uh, thing to do while the timeout is uh, being ran, it's still possible to click. On our card so we're going to disable this by adding an if statement before here if chosen cards dot length um, is e is not equal to two then this may be run because otherwise you could flip four cards or five cards and yeah only flip back those that were selected as the second uh, as the first two so just a fail safe in here all right, then we're going to add another function, and this function will be check for match. Yeah, check for match. And in this function, we're going to keep track of the attempts. Remember? All right, so 
keeping track of the attempts. Um, then in this function, we're also going to add variable cards. And we're going to set this to all cards in our document. So document, array selector, uh, all, then all images. All right. So the first card will be the first card um, in the IDs of the card of the chosen cards. So chosen cards, chosen cards, IDs, the first one. And let's copy this and set this to one. And this will be the second, second card. Well, now we're going to check if they are equal. So if chosen cards uh, zero and chosen cards one are equal, remember we have set this with uh, the name of the card. So if they are equal, well, then we have a match. So the found, found cards must be increment and we also have to set the card um, the, the cards array with the ID of the first card set attribute well you can guess it already the source must be equal to the blank one so images blank PNG we're going to do the same thing for the second one. So second card also set attribute to the blank one. But if we don't have a match, then we have to set them back to the placeholders and do not increment the found cards. So placeholder. All right, so while they are flipped again, we have to clear the chosen cards and the chosen cards ID. All right, so we're just going to do this like this. Chosen cards and chosen cards ID equal to an empty array. And also we're going to update the status of the um, found holder and the attempt holder. So attempts holder text content must be the found cards. No, sorry, the attempts like this and the uh, found, found holder to the found cards. All right. And whenever um, the game is done, and this is where my cards in game comes in handy, whenever the um, amount of cards is equal, found amount of out, the, the amount of found cards is equal to the cards in game, we can say, yeah, you won. So when found cards is equal to cards in game, I'm going to push an alert to the user, well done. And that should be it. So we have initialization of the board, then we have flip card function, check for match, and that's it. So let's run it. You can see it's uh, random. The attempts are being pushed, so I know this one is here. Bam! And I have found one and have six attempts. So yeah, I'm just clicking around right now, but you get the feeling, right? You get the game. All right, that was it. I hope you learned something from it. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below or hit me up on uh, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, be sure to subscribe and like this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.